Hello world, we are back with another episode of Three Candid Questions. And this one is, I would say, a super powerful, shorter pep talk for all of you. I interviewed Inga, my coach colleague, and she radiated a lot of strength, a lot of energy, a lot of drive. So take that away from this episode and let me know what else you learned and um, you know how your brain got a few golden nuggets. I'm super curious. If you would like to support us, then look for the link on the YouTube channel, look for the link in the audio descriptions, and we will be super happy about anyone who donates. Speak soon. Hi, Inga. Hi there. Lovely that you could make it for this conversation today. Thanks so much for your time. No problem. I'm glad to connect again. Yes, same here. So before we jump into like just talking about deeper stuff, I would love for you to introduce yourself a little for the audience. Who is Inga and what does she do? Awesome. Well, my name is Inga Faison Cavett. I go by Inga Fay, and I am a confidence coach for home-based business owners. I help enhance women's confidence through their appearance, their mindset, and their consistency. And I've been building my business, well, I'll say my, my business as far as helping women with their appearance for over 18 years. I'm an affiliate for a direct sales company. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that during COVID, um, it came very apparent to me that when women look good, they feel good. And when they feel good, they could do more. But in actuality, we have the six inches between our ears that can sometimes hinder us from doing what we want to do or what we think we should do for whatever Absolutely. reason. So I decided that I wanted to serve women more than just with their appearance, that I could also serve them with um, their mindset and their consistency, mm -hmm. because I realized that those two pieces also will help us grow into the woman that we're destined to become in mm -hmm. whatever passion or feel that we um, feel like is, is our, our purpose. Mm -hmm. So, and, it, and that is really what it came down to, because I have a passion for just enhancing women in general. I want to help women to be financially independent because I find that sometimes we put ourselves in, I'll say, somewhat compromising positions when we feel like we have to rely on someone else. Yeah. So I want women to feel like they can take care of number one. My mother always used to tell me that. And not necessarily just take care of ourselves, mm -hmm. but if we have kids that we're able to take care of the kids too, because as mama is strong, then she can help raise strong kids. It really start, starts off with mama and grandma. So just working with moms and grandmas to help them be strong so then they can be strong for their kids. So then they can then raise strong kids. So then those strong kids can then grow up to be strong adults. So those strong adults can then help build strong communities and just make this world a better place in general. Wow. So I'm starting off with the mamas and the grandmas so we can get <laughs> this party started and really just help the world in general. Because mm -hmm. as we all know, the woman is the nucleus of everything. And if mama's not doing good, then nobody's doing good. So <laughs> if we can get mama straight and grandmama straight, then we all are just going to have a better world and a happier home to live in. I absolutely love that. And I was thinking about you saying how um, inspired you are to support women in particular. Mm -hmm. It's super interesting knowing your history that actually for many years you worked in a very masculine and male dominated. Ironically, field. yes. <laughs> yeah. So how, how did that happen and how did this whole shift happen in the end? Well, I think it because I think it was because I was in that male dominated field. Yes. I was a mechanical engineer for over 20 years wow. in a chemical plant. Um, where the most time I was the only one. I can remember in school that we used to have this study group mm -hmm. and it was, matter of, well, I guess that was a little bit different because I did have another female colleague that was a part of the group. It was five of us. So we pretty much did all of our courses together. It was three guys and two women mm -hmm. and we were all studying mechanical engineering. Yeah. And from that experience, I really did understand the power of 
the dream works when the team works together. Mm -hmm. And it was just somewhat of a utopia for me because my male colleagues, they, they, they didn't take me for granted. They weren't trying to test my te technical prowess because we were in this thing together, right? Mm -hmm. We were teaching each other how to do it. But when I transitioned into a corporate type of setting, I got the, oh, well, she's a woman and she's just here to fill a quota kind of thing, or mm -hmm. she really doesn't know what she's doing. Um, she can't really be technical sound because she's a woman. Okay, really? So it, yeah. it was a lot of uphill battle, me questioning myself, is this really what I want to do? Mm -hmm. Do I really have the capability of doing the things that I have studied and spent all of this time learning how to do? Yeah. Um, second guessing myself, self-sabotage, um, imposter syndrome, all of that was going on in my head. Mm -hmm. And that was amazingly what, I don't know, whatever, for whatever reason, surfaced when all of this COVID stuff started happening was like, oh, Inga, you went through this. I mean, you you dealt with this on a regular yeah. basis yeah. when you were working as a mechanical engineer and how I would have to be like, <laughs> helping myself up being a little chiller. Inga, let's do this now. You can do it. Get your mind straight. You're going to go in here and make this happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So understanding all of that, I think that's why my heart goes out to women. Not saying that women can't do it, not saying that they can't be mechanical engineers because they can. Mm -hmm. But I can just tell you, girlfriend, it's going to be an uphill battle. Now, there probably are some places that will kind of be somewhat of a cocoon like it was when I was in school. Mm -hmm. And maybe it was a little bit different because we were all doing this thing together we're just trying to figure it out um and I don't think those guys that I was studying with I don't think I would have had a problem with them if I was working with them I can say I, I really don't think I would have but everybody didn't necessarily think like they think yeah, um, yeah. so I you know it was some shifting that I had to do which really just had my heart to go out to women mm. and how did you manage that shift what was What was it that you used to help you work through your own emotions and your own experiences and then come out stronger? Well, I had, I I did have people, I had other female engineers that mm -hmm. I could go and talk to. So I did have a sounding board. I think that's okay. very important. Yeah. And I did have some male managers that encourage me and put me in challenging type of positions that really allowed me to shine. And I'm grateful for that as well. Mm. So it was kind of that, you know, do or die type of thing that I was put in um, those type of situations. And in some, in some cases, I didn't necessarily rise to the occasion, mm. which was a learning for me mm. where I got a whole lot of feedback And then in other cases, I, I did what I had to do because I had learned what not to do that I did in the past and did something different the following time. So I really think having those type of people that constantly are encouraging you and nurturing you and just making you know that you can do it. I mean, I think we all need that at some point, mm. especially if we're doing something that's somewhat challenging out of our comfort zone that we have nothing, we have no idea what to do. I think it's in our best interest to have those cheerleaders around us that are encouraging us and telling us you can do this it's okay mm -hmm. granted okay yeah you messed up it's feedback it's mm -hmm. not something that is going to make or break your career you are you just learn from it and you do it better the next time mm -hmm. so and I really think that's what people should do in general and I definitely learned that as an entrepreneur that you definitely have to fail forward to success Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that, because it sounds to me like there are a lot of golden nuggets hidden in that journey as well. When you then started to become like a full blown entrepreneur, how was yeah. that for you? So while I was working as an engineer, I did have my affiliate business that I did on a part time basis. Mm -hmm. And it was it was kind of I guess it was very encouraging to me because I spent all day with men. <laughs> and then when off, after I got off, I was able to hang out with some positive and encouraging women. Mm -hmm. So and that I think that was one of the things that really intrigued me about um, my direct sales company, that I could be hanging out with other positive, and encouraging women, yes. women that 
gave you that encouragement that would, if you didn't learn know how to do something, they were there to kind of give you a step-by-step -step instruction. So I kind of felt like I had the a little of both worlds. And as I continued to do that, I realized that I didn't necessarily like the engineering thing that I was doing great. I could do it. It paid my bills. I made great money. I have mm. people say, oh my gosh, girl, why would you leave your good job? I hear that so many times. Why would you leave your good job to be out on your own? Well, one, because I can actually do something that I love and I don't mm. have to deal with all the drama and the politics of being an engineer in a corporate setting that often comes about that people, I don't know, for whatever reason, I guess they just think you're supposed to deal with that because you're getting a check and yeah. I'm not going to sell out for a check. So um, I took that leap of faith. I, I actually was laid off right before COVID with these grand hopes that I was going to replace my corporate income in six months with my direct sales business and COVID happened. <laughs> so everything that I had planned on doing on, uh, uh, you know, I had already got my business going. I was doing it on a part-time yeah. basis. It was wonderful. It was just taking it up a notch. Yeah. So all of those things that I had been doing to be successful in the past, I literally had to throw out the window and regroup, which mm -hmm. came, which really made me aware of, of this mindset thing. Yeah. And I, I remember hearing so many people tell me stuff like, well, I'm just going to wait till it's over. <laughs> well, I guess they're still waiting. <laughs> Because technically it's not over. I don't even know if it's going to be over. That's We're just kind of rolling with it. So, yeah. yeah. So that that is that is where the transition came. Mm -hmm. And that that's how I got from an entrepreneur to an entrepreneur. Well, I say I always do that. I get my E's mixed up all the time. That's how I went from an engineer to an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And I really feel like I was educated for this because as an engineer, you are a trained problem solver. Yes. That is what you do all day, every day is solve problems. And as an entrepreneur, that's how you make your money by solving problems for people, finding solution for folks problem, finding a need and, and filling it. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, to me, it feels like it's a, just a perfect match. And yeah. I get to choose who I work with now more so than getting stuck with people that I probably would not not want to work with if I had to choose. So. Mm, which is awesome. Awesome. Yes. So <clears throat> what would be your top advice to someone who is still waiting and sort of scared of taking that leap of faith and starting their own business, going for their dreams, whatever it may be. But what's your number one advice specifically to your girlfriends out there? Yes. Well, I would say, girlfriend, you just need to start. It doesn't have to be a big start. It doesn't have to be something huge. You just got to take a step of action. Mm -hmm. And I am a firm believer that when you take that first step, that the next step will be presented to you. You don't have to have it all laid out. And I think that's what people get so caught up in when it comes mm -hmm. to entrepreneurship, because most people, I'm sure like me, were taught you go to school and you get your degree. And then at you, after you get your degree, you work for XYZ company for 30 plus years and then you get your gold watch. Okay, so we have this plan that has been given to us since birth on how we should walk out our life. Yeah. Well, entrepreneurship is not like that in any way. Mm -hmm. We're given the first step. <laughs> and my first step for you, girlfriend, is to start. Then after you start, then the next step will be presented to you. But the key to this is that you have to take the step to get the next step. It's not like that long staircase that we see or we go to school, we, we get out of high school, we go to college, we get out of college, we get a job, we work 30 years, we get the go watch. It's not laid like, out like that for an entrepreneur. And I think that's what gets people hung up. Yeah. You just got to take that first step and make that transition. So I want to share this story. This, Please this, do. I was, I, yeah, I was listening to this um, devotional this week and it just hit me like a ton of bricks. And it was talking about how you should walk with discernment and basically trusting your gut if you believe in, in Christ, you know, trusting the Lord to guide you in your steps. And what it was saying that, 
basically when you step out of your comfort zone, it's like stepping into a cave and all you have is a, a candle that's only lit just to show you the next step. And you know that a cave can really be treacherous. It can have all kinds of rocks. It could have animals in it and all of that. And you can get freaked out about all of poss possible bad things that could happen. Or you can just focus on, okay, I made this step. It was okay. Now I'm going to make the next one. And it was talking about how you just got to walk it out, walk through that uncomfortableness, walk through that uncertainty, walk through the fear. And as you continue to walk, that you will eventually see sunlight. You see a glimpse of sunlight, like you're you're almost out. So it's just like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm almost there. That is so cool. And you just keep walking and you keep walking. And then you get on the other side. And on that other side is what's called freedom. And that's what's the on the other side of fear. And so many times I have seen that myself, that I have done different things and just been scared out of my wits. Mm -hmm. like, what am I going to do? I cannot believe I'm going to do this. And then you do it. And it was just like, is that all there is? I mean, <laughs> really? I mean, I thought it was going to be something treacherous that was going to happen. But in actuality, it was just all of this stuff that we make up in our head that didn't even happen. And then when it doesn't happen, it's just like, wow. But the great thing about it is you build that courage muscle. So you did it that one time and then you have that point of reference. Well, when I did X, Y, Z, I walked it out. I was scared out of my wits, but I did it anyway. And this is what happened. And that wasn't bad. Okay, so why don't I try it again? I'm gonna mm -hmm. try it again. And then it's like, just like your muscle entropy, making it bigger and bigger. You get this bigger confidence muscle. So it's just like, hell, I'm just going to do it. I, you know, I don't know if it's what's going to happen on the end. I'm scared again, but I know I did X, Y, Z, A, B, C, um, uh, I, F, G. I've done all of these other things and it worked out. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to walk it out and just, yeah. you know, whatever happens, happens and I'm going to roll with it, but you have to start. And that's, and that's why I'm so adamant about telling people, you just got to start. And if you start, the other stuff will kind of come together and you'll just look down. It's like, instead of looking up at the staircase, you'll end up looking down at the staircase and you're just like, wow, I got this far. I never knew I would get this far. Or like I was like the cave I was just talking about. The mm. cave, see that glimpse of like, oh, there's the light. What? I walked all the way through and you're looking at all <laughs> black and back and it's just like, oh my gosh, but it's light that way. So I'm definitely going to go that way. Yeah. So it's, it's the same exact thing. So that's what I would tell people. I know that's mm. kind of my long rendition of what I would say, but yes. No, it's an awesome, awesome story and such a nice analogy. I'm just thinking of the people who are usually not even able to see how far they have come, mm -hmm. you know, to celebrate their successes. And I feel as women, we often have that. It's almost like we don't feel we are entitled to happiness or to be successful or, you know, to have what we want and live our dreams. So what would you say to such a girlfriend who is sort of stuck in that thing, not even seeing how great they can be and, you know, that they have actually done something if they have already started and they are on their way? Right. Well, what I would say to her is, girl, I, I know personally, I like to write things down. Mm -hmm. I like to write it down as it's happening. So Each day, I make it a point to write down, okay, these are the things that I learned today. This is what I accomplished today. Mm -hmm. And this is what I learned today. And, and it's kind of a, a checkpoint, yeah. a check and balance type of thing for me, because I know we can get so caught up on the next level. Because I mean, the level is like endless. It's when you look at the next level, it's just clouds because it never ends, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So having that basis of being able to look back and say, wow, I did all of this. I didn't know I did all of this because if you don't document it, yeah, you think, oh, I'm this, I'm, I'm never going to get to that next level. But if you were able to really look at those stair, I mean, those steps that you've already accomplished mm -hmm. to get to whatever level you're going to, because like, like I said, it's never ending. It, it's limitless. Then I think you would have more of a sense of gratitude 
for the small wins that you have accomplished because the small wins are what's going to accumulate into that big win. And then after you do that big win, you're going to be going for the next win. I mean, like I said, it's it's ever changing. Yes. But being able to just celebrate the little stuff. So it's not such a, oh, I'm never going to get it done. Mm. It's those little baby steps that make you feel good inside. And that's what really fuels you. I can remember when I um, I used to body build. Mm. And that was one of the things that really encourage me because I don't know if you guys know when you body bill it's like you can't eat nothing I mean you really just basically eat oatmeal with no flavor I mean it's just a whole bunch of stuff you probably would never eat it's good for your body I mean it's helping fuel your body you feel really good in the inside but you know everybody every now and then you want a piece of cake or <laughs> or a hamburger and some fries I mean come on I mean I'm just being real here so be real <laughs> but during this time, I was sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, this is just forever. But I could see the transformation mm. in my body. So it was just like, oh, okay. Granted, I can't have fries, but do you see this? Okay, come <laughs> on. I'm getting six pack abs. I've never had six pack abs. This is just awesome. Yeah. You know, I, I lift my leg. I can see like every muscle in my leg. Oh yeah, come on now. This is like inspiring. Oh yeah, I can hold off. Yeah. <laughs> So it's kind of that same type of thing that you need that daily win. And oftentimes we are so quick to overlook those daily wins because we have them every day. Mm -hmm. And I think if we were more cognizant of those daily wins, that we wouldn't get so caught up in not reaching the level that we wanted to reach because we, we're overlooking our progress. We're completely overlooking our progress. If we could just say, well, last week I did this. And this week I'm able to do this, 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 and this because mm. of the things that I did last week. Now, how good, how awesome is that? Yeah. So being able to really be grateful for the small things that you have accomplished, I think it's just a must. I think it's a very powerful statement also because it forces us to be present. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's the other thing. If we are just always chasing that dream and never realizing that we are actually already living it by right. going for it, exactly. then it's tricky. But once we decide, okay, we are going to celebrate the small wins every day, that's when we actually live our life to the fullest. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's a very good one. So how do you celebrate your wins? Um, how do I? It just depends. I mean, mm -hmm. it just depends on the win. Um, sometimes I'll I'll get a massage. I'll treat myself to a massage. Mm -hmm. um, or I may have that piece of cake. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm learning how to, I guess, cook a little better. So it's more nutritious, is more nutritious than it once was. Mm -hmm. um, so just kind of stepping out my comfort zone with that. Just, I guess, just kind of appreciating me, celebrating me for what I have done yes. and not really getting caught up in how long. I think people can get can get really in, ingrained in, well, how long, how long is it going to take? And no one can tell you that. I don't know mm. how long it's going to take. Everybody has their own learning curve. Everybody has their own um, method of figuring out different things. Some people may get it quicker than others because they may just, I mean, it just may be easier for them for whatever reason, which is not bad. It just, you know, everybody has their their passion and and the, 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 the things that they're good at. And it may be a little bit harder for you, but just because it's harder for you doesn't mean that you can't have the same success as somebody else. You just may have to just work a little bit harder to get it. Mm. And being okay with that because- you know, you may have to work harder at this, but some this over here is something that's really easy for you that somebody else would have to work really hard for it because everybody has their own talents. Yeah, and that's passion, so. so, so good that you're saying that, like staying, not always comparing yourself and feeling like right. I'm never good enough, but staying with who you really are and seeing what strengths you have and use that. Exactly. Yeah. And also accepting that when things are a little harder for you, it's fine. You just work hard for it and yeah, you, you can just work harder for it. Yep. Yeah. You'll be you'll be more appreciative of it 
for sure, because you had to work harder for it. So. Oh, that's true. That's very true. <clears throat> so Inga, is there anything that you want to tell this whole world of girlfriends out there as a sort of ending to this wonderful conversation? Well, I just want to say that, girlfriend, I want you to step out of your comfort zone, okay? Mm -hmm. You may not know how to do something, and that's completely okay. And just like we just talked about, anything, you can learn anything. Have more of a growth mindset than a fixed mindset, because anything that you put effort in and diligently work on, you can figure out, like, like we just talked about, and not think that you have to have some secret sauce or magic peel that's going to help you make you successful. Because if you really want to know what it is, it's called effort and consistency. Mm -hmm. Though that's the secret sauce, that's the magic peel. And effort, well, really, let me give you three things. Effort, consistency, and doing it long enough to be successful. Because mm -hmm. I think that's what we get caught up in. Well, I was consistent for a whole week and I just didn't get the results. <laughs> I just don't understand. No, girlfriend, you got to do it longer than a week. Okay. So, and, and don't ask me how long, because I don't know how long. I have no idea. I get that all the time, but how long? I don't know. I have no idea. Just continue to walk it out and it's going to happen, but you got to, got to continue to walk it out. So that is what I would tell you to do. A wonderful, wonderful end to this awesome conversation. I feel super energized. I feel like I should sit down right now and sort of celebrate my nice little wins today and exactly. then move on in my own business. So thank you so much, Inga. <laughs> oh, you are so welcome. Speak soon. All right. Bye for now. Bye. Let me see.